Today, I thought I would do a demo on using the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons in my watercoloring. So we're going to start with this one. And Distress Crayons are a water reactive pigment in a stick form. So it comes in this little barrel. And when you want more, you raise it up. And if you want less, you raise it back down. It lasts a very long time, so you don't have to be stingy with the product. It goes on very much like lipstick. And for smaller images, I wouldn't actually color right on the image. So what I'll do is I'll put an amount on my craft sheet. Like I said, you don't have to be stingy because it lasts a very long time. And a little bit goes a long way. This is my water brush, primed and ready to go. And you know it's primed because there's water coming out of it. So the first thing I would do is just pick up a little bit of color and I would just fill in the circle. There we go. Now, I like a little bit of shading. So I'm going to go into a spot that doesn't have water in it already and just apply it to just the one edge so that you get a little bit more. So then you can say, you know what, I want more red. It's not dark enough, it's too pink. So we'll go in and we'll add more. And then I'm going to do my shadow. See, the more water you add, the lighter the shade. So that's why I keep going into a place that doesn't have water. Because if I add, if I get it from here, it's already a shade lighter than the original color. So I didn't want to do that. So let's go on to the second one. So we'll go pick up some color. There we go. I want a little bit darker. So we're going to add some more color and put our shadow in. There. Beautiful. I think this one needs a little bit more color as well. So let's add a little bit more to that. It's great because it's very easy to add color. Or if you feel like you've added too much color, you can remove color. So let's move on to the pepper. So I'm going to take a little bit of my product. Scribble it out on my craft sheet. Go in my pen, make sure it's clean. Pick up some color. Color the edge. And I like to do my shadow. So let's put that in. Now say you wanted less color. Say, oh, that's too much color. So you want to clean your brush, and you're going to go in and lift, lift it out. Clean your brush, lift it out. Because the more water that you add, the lighter the shade is going to become. Then you say to yourself, nah, it's too light. So let's put some more color back in. So go back, and you can add more color. Say, oh, I want my shadow. Let's get a shadow. Let's go back over here. And we'll put a nice little shadow in. Now, if you notice, I spilled over the line there. So what you want to do is make sure you clean your brush. You just want to lightly feather that away. Because, like I said, the more water you add, the lighter the shade. So you can essentially erase these mistakes and when you die cut this out you won't even notice if there's a little tiny bit of residue from the color left over some colors are easier to do this than others red is a little bit harder to do than say yellow So let's go back and finish our second pepper, but I need more product. So I'm just going to scribble some more on there. And 
going to fill it in. That's my first layer. Then I'm going to go back for my shadow. And I'm going to put just on this side. If you want more, put more on there. There you go. My suggestion is to work with one item at a time because if you put once you put crayon on something and you work with it it dries and once it's dried you cannot shade or move the color or blend unless you put additional crayon on top then you can move and shade that layer of crayon but not the layer underneath so once it dries it's done so let's move on to a larger image that you can color in. So we're going to get some more red for ketchup. This is a ketchup bottle. So what you do is you color the sides, just this side, and you color the bottom because we're going to shade this. And we don't want to color the whole thing because that will just give us way too much color and there, we won't be able to do any shading. So you, first thing you do is you wet the pigment with your water brush so that it moves nicely when you want it to. Now, just bring that color over. Feather it over. And if you feel like that's too much color or you made a mistake, there's some back. Blend it. So blend it in so that it's all nice. There we go. Blend it. So you say, oh, that's that's too much color. So then you just lift and clean your brush. Lift and clean your brush. And you say, oh, that's not enough color. So then you can either work this over a little bit more or take your water, your pigment, your crayon, and just put a little bit more on there. You can put this on wet watercolor paper. So that's great. You don't have to dry it. You don't want to dry it because if you dry it, it's done. So there's a lot you can do with this. And it's just a matter of your taste. What do you like? So there's a big spot right over here that I missed. It went outside the line. So we'll just add a little water and clean our brush. Add a little water, clean our brush. Add a little water, clean the brush. Just keep slowly lifting that color up and away. And like I said, once you die cut this, it's not going to be noticeable at all if there is a slight residue. Now, we can't fill this in with a crayon, so we have to come back over here to our little pile of color. And we'll just add that in like this. That's too harsh. Shade it out. There's a lot you can do while it's still wet. And now you know what I know. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you've seen, give a like and subscribe. Thanks.